Living life to the fullest, finding contentment amidst a chaotic, sinful world, staying true to God's Word in our daily lives. These are just a few of the concepts to be discussed as we introduce you to author and speaker Chris Conley. How do we achieve balance in our life? It's something we all talk about, but oftentimes have tr tr struggle, trouble, finding a way to do that. Well, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we're going to help you do just that as we're joined by Chris Conley. And Chris, you've developed what you call the eight facets of life, a way to achieve balance in life. And, I, you know, the old saying goes, I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And that's kind of the core of the first principle we're going to talk about, which is personal development. Right. Uh, from a personal development standpoint, I think many people put this aspect on cruise control and, uh, and this can be really dangerous because unless we're uh, reading new books to get new ideas, listening to CDs, talking with other people, there's no way we're going to be better tomorrow than we were today. Um, I think one of the stories that I heard some time ago really made this evident to me. And it's, a, it's the idea that we've all traveled, or most of us, uh, the flight attendant would come on the uh, intercom and say, uh, in the event the cabin pressure drops, oxygen mask will drop from the ceiling, make sure that you secure yours before helping others. And if you're traveling with a child or grandchild, you might be thinking, well, I'm going to take care of them first. But in the commotion, if we fail to even secure ours, we're no, no good to anyone else. So as we can make ourselves smarter, wiser, it's going to have that ripple effect on the people that we love and care for the most. Absolutely. I mean, we, we have to improve ourselves before we can even start thinking about improving anybody else. Exactly. And as, as you said, this is kind of the first step of, of several steps we're going to go through. Why, is it, why do you think personal development is so important? Well, it has that ripple effect on everything else, I think, because um, I've learned more about being a better parent after my kids were gone than I did at the time. You know, I think we just get caught up in the um, he hectic parts of life. And um, if we're not in tune with trying to learn more, then we just leave it to chance, and, and sometimes that's a poor teacher. And as we, we learn more, we have that opportunity to be there for others then. Exactly. I, I think the frustrating part to me has been, as I've tried to share what I've learned with others, that not everybody wants to hear that. But that really can't stop us from trying. Um, as, as we share something that's worked or a good place to visit, whether it's a website, uh, listen to this CD, or read this book. A lot of people are going to let that fall on deaf ears, but uh, many people will follow through, and that's what's encouraging. So despite the fact that people may not um, follow up on that, it still shouldn't deter us because we still want what's best for us and what's best for them. You know, and I think maybe some of our viewers might be sitting at home thinking to themselves, well, I'm advanced, I'm, I'm in a stage of my life where I, I, I can't learn anymore, I can't grow anymore, but that's certainly not the case. No, I, I don't think, I've never met someone that I would classify as a 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, I always tell people in my talks that if you think you're a 10, you're not, because a 10 is perfection, and uh, there's always something we can learn, and we can learn something from everyone. What, uh, what are some other tips you have for personal development? Well, I think the big thing is, um, it, whether it's going to a seminar, class, um, I go there w with the idea that I'm going to learn something. So I'm going to take notes. I'm going to sit in the front row. Um, I'm going to listen to CDs. I got in that habit uh, the last 10 years I worked where I didn't just sit there to get there. I, you know, it was Automobile University, as Zig Ziglar talked about. And uh, I, I learned an immense amount of information during that time. And some people feel like, well, I can't take notes, but you'd be surprised how much you can retain and make a couple notes when you do arrive at work. Um, or you can always listen to the CD again. So when, when you find something that's really good. You know, I think one of the things you're kind of touching on is education doesn't end when we get a piece of paper. Education should be a continuing thing. Sure. Yep. And, and, and for me, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, I've, I'm not about to read books anymore. But like I say, if, if you're not reading books or other material, listening to CDs or getting any information from people, you're not going to develop any more than just what maybe comes your way. And we live in an information age where there's lots of resources out there. And you know, as you kind of touched on, you know, there's books, 
there's you know things on, on CD, and there's a lot of information on the internet that, that right. probably scares some people to get online. But you know the internet's a tool just like any other tool that can be used for good. Right. Yeah. The podcasts that I listen to now are kind of doing away with the CDs. I don't think some cars are even coming out with CDs anymore. Now, in the coming weeks, we're going to be going through some other aspects of your eight facets of life. But before we do that, how did you come up with, with these eight facets? Well, I, I had a supplier at my work that would give out the uh, planners every year. And uh, one year around Christmas time, uh, I got to looking. And then, you know, the typical one had the months and uh, it had the contact information, but there was a page on goals. And as I looked at that, I thought, well, I always had career goals. They were kind of mandated. If I wanted to get pay raises, promotions, I had to take that serious. And then the finance and the uh, health always made sense because they're easy to track. But these other areas, I never really set a goal. And it just made me think that if I didn't set goals in those areas, these are areas that most of us say are most important, our faith, our family, relationships, then they're just going to get what's left. So that's what got me thinking in this direction. Personal development, the first of the eight facets of life. And Chris does teach his eight facets of life through workshops. So if you're interested in having him talk to your group or your organization, you can contact him through email at theconleys102 at gmail.com.